You are now listening to the Purpose Edits Podcast. You gotta be willing to be vulnerable. You have to have the ability to self-assess, and not everybody has the ability to self-assess. You don't necessarily have to like schools to be successful in school. You just have to know how to play the game and finesse it and get through it. Welcome to the Perfect Settings Podcast. This is a short yet powerful conversation designed to help you do three things that can ultimately change the trajectory of your life. One, discover your purpose. Two, walk in your purpose. And three, ultimately fulfill your purpose. I am your host, Coach Vic, and I'm joined as always by my lifelong friend, my brother, the educator, Dr. Shane Calhoun. Shane, what up, homie? How you living? Yo, yo, what's going on? Oh, man, another day, another dollar. Man, let me start here. First, confession for our audience, not for you, because you already know this. In all the times that we have been friends, I have never missed your birthday. Ah. And this year was the first time that I missed your birthday. Happy birthday, bro. I appreciate it. And thank you. So I'm off the hook. So I got to get out of jail free card if I happen to forget um, somebody's birthday. And that, that's for you too, Nelsie, if I forget you. Which is important. That's important to know. <laughs> on the other side, no shade. But the reason we put so much pressure on that in this friendship is Shane has a tendency to get busy and sometimes will forget that it's our birthdays. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm really good at that stuff. So um, I don't trip about it. Like, um, and we talked several times that day. We did. And, and I had we and did. I had several people to come up to me and say, why didn't you tell me it was your birthday? I was just like, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know. I'm weird in that kind of way. I don't really get caught up and stuff. I don't know. I don't know what it is and why it is. But yeah, man, it's good, man. You're good. I appreciate it. And um, had a good day. That's good, man. That's good. It was, it was during the week, right? Yeah, it was a, a Tuesday, Tuesday, I want to say, a Monday, yeah. something like that, Monday or Tuesday. I hate when, like, my birthday falls during the week. It's like a weird thing. If it's on a Monday or a Friday, it's easy. Okay, I'm going to celebrate the weekend. I'm going to probably take off. Or I'm yeah. just, you know, it's easier to celebrate. But when it's, like, smack dab in the middle of the, the week. Middle, yeah, it makes it weird. Uh, do I celebrate on the front end? Do I celebrate on the back end? I'm curious. <laughs> maybe, maybe our audience can help us. What do you do when your birthday falls smack dab in the middle of a week? Do you take off the weekend before? Do you take off the weekend after? You, how do you celebrate? What do you do? I'm curious. Curious on that advice. Like for me, I've never really, you know, growing up because of sports, football, spo- uh, especially because my birthday is in October. I could mm. never really celebrate because either we had practice. We had a game, we had curfew, <laughs> so yeah, something, <laughs> something was always interrupted. So I don't know how to celebrate birthdays. Yeah, me neither. I'm, I'm the worst at it. Um, yeah, I shoot. I typically go to work. I I was this close to calling out on my birthday and taking a day off, but I felt like such a loser. Just, really? I did. I I I did. I was like, you're gonna take off on your birthday just because? Yeah. Why? So I ended up not taking off and I'm not knocking anybody that does that. I have, I have coworkers that every year they go on cruises during their birthday week. That's good. That's them. But just me personally, it's just like, yeah, man, go do your work and celebrate later. Truthfully, I didn't start taking off a day for my birthday until like 2018, maybe 2019, Mm. because like I would just go to work. Cause to me, it was another day again, another day. Yeah. I wasn't able to celebrate anyway. I'm used to working on my birthday so we're just gonna yeah. go to work it'll be all right yeah that's 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 kind of thing i'm gonna maybe next year start looking into taking off just because just because take the day and do my day you do. yeah my day to do whatever i want to do and nobody can say anything about it yep but i thought about it this year i just didn't i didn't pull the trigger on it yeah yeah well i won't forget anymore that's for sure i never forget <laughs> i never forget this moment that's great <laughs> What's new in your world, man? Nothing, bro. Um, wrapping up the school year and wrapping up the school year means get ready for summer basketball. So um, that's it. Just just wrapping up the year, ready to get to the summer and, and see what we got. And uh, that's it. Well, Dan, let's get with the honestly, 
nothing right now. Well, I take that back. I got a lot working behind the scenes, but nothing I'm ready to share. So we'll just put a pin in that for later. Got you. Let's switch directions. Let's get to the good stuff, the juicy stuff. Mm -hmm. I want to go down what blew your mind because I'm anxious to get into this topic, man. This this one hit me today while I was sitting in church, and I think you're going to like it. So tell me, what blew your mind, sir? Uh, just a little quote that I had saved from Kevin Hart. He said, the dream is not about the dollar. It's about the achievement. The Kevin Hart. Not about Dream is not about the dollar. dollar. It's about the achievement. And from that, I I take that too many times people get focused on money and the financial gains of things as opposed to falling in love with the craft, the art, the job. And it just all becomes about the money and and the money's fleeting. You know, um, you can always make more money you can always make more money. We were talking on Friday and on Friday, <laughs> a whole new revenue stream that I wasn't expecting jumped off and I got paid for another project that I did. Um, we just finished off the music for my boy, uh, Kit, Stoic Life. His, his clothing line jumped off and we just finished the music for it. And um, as I say, you can always get more money. And you said, man, there's so many ways to get money. You know what I'm saying? You go on YouTube right now. I'm pretty sure you can find a video about seven passive income ideas. And every video you watch, there'll be uh, some make money from home in your underwear while you're watching. Yeah. You know, Um, but if you spend the time just chasing the money, you're going to lose perspective. Like focus on the achievement of of crushing goals. And that's kind of what I took from it. Yeah, this culture that we're in is always talking about chasing the bag, chasing the bag, got to get the next bag. But at the end of the day, money, what you have, what you obtain is the result of either doing the work or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. Right. Your bag is only as big as the amount of work you put into the process. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people find themselves chasing bag after bag, because if you go back upstream, they ain't put in a whole lot of work. That's the reason you got to keep chasing bags. So you might want to evaluate for those out there chasing bags, how much work you putting in on the front end. Yeah. 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 Should have talked about this earlier. What do you think about this Buffalo shooting thing? My heart goes out to the victims and their families. Yeah, I haven't done any research or anything into the shooter. I've only seen, you know, headlines and pictures. Right. I'm not numb to it like some of society. And so I'm really it bothers me. And I tell you, here's here's the connection. So I got a friend of mine, Rich. Rich lives down here in Florida. Rich is the only person that I know specifically from Buffalo. Mm. And I hadn't talked to Rich. Me and him hadn't talked in a few months. But the first thing that I see scrolling through Facebook is Buffalo Strong posted by Rich. And immediately I'm thinking about him and his family that lives back there. Mm. You know what I mean? So that's for me why I can't be numb to it because I'm I still got people who are impacted by this, you know, this stuff, you know, the, I, my heart goes out to anybody impacted by this, whether we close or not, but especially because I got friends who, who are impacted by this, you know, mm. it just sucks, man. Yeah. Um, I was a bit numb. Me and my wife, we were driving to that party and she said another shooting in Buffalo, or whatever, whatever. I was like, Oh, okay. And not to minimize the lives lost, but like, unfortunately, this is just our reality. You know, the, these things happen. Now, one of the things that did bother me and I'm a bit conflicted about is every time you have one of these shootings and it's racially fueled, you always get the conversation of, well, nobody's up in arms when Chicago when somebody gets shot in Chicago every day, da, 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 da. And I just, I just always wonder, I, I wonder about both sides. I wonder why aren't our black lives matter people as vocal about 
those killings as they are this over here. But I also wonder why are so why are people so quick and anxious to uh, defend white supremacy and racism and hate? And and I mean I get both sides of it. It's just um it's just kind of like a cycle. I just I, I I just don't understand it. Yeah, yeah. I saw a clip on TikTok not too long ago before we got going, just scrolling, killing time. And basically the premise of it was there are people who are upset that there's an attack on white supremacy because they think that it's also an attack on white people. And it's not. White oh, yeah. supremacy is not white people. It's not an attack on it. White supremacy is something totally different. That's a concept. Right. But if you are offended, if you feel some type of way about the attack on white supremacy, then that yeah. says a whole lot about you. Like the clip, the clip had me thinking, I'm like, wow. Yeah, it, it's, the same, it's the same thing. You know, if you wear a shirt that says black excellence and somebody gets offended, it's not that I'm anti-white. I just happen to be pro-black. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean <laughs> that I disdain or have a hate or I'm even saying that I'm superior. Yep. It's just a statement of, you know, so that, but those, fast, it's fascinating, bro. It's, it's fascinating. And it's crazy because people in general of all races, colors, creeds, ethnicities, we are all more alike than we are different. And we don't we even are. realize it. We are. We can't get past the surface, the polar opposites, whatever it is that we believe. We can't lean into, figure out why we might be similar because we're too busy focused on why we might be different. different. And that's enough of a reason to stay separated. Now, yeah. I'm not I'm not sitting here preaching that, oh, we got a kumbaya and all of that. No, that's not it. But what I'm saying is as people, as human beings, we have more in common than we are different. And a lot of my conversations in the past week or two have been around that. Mm. How am am I more like you? How, what do we have in common that we didn't know? Like a great question I like to ask when I'm doing diversity training is this, what's something people can't tell about you just by looking at you? Mm. What's something people can't tell about you just by looking at you? And why is that important for people to know? Mm. If you had to answer that question, what would you say? And I'll I'll start by telling you what I tell people. I'm a step parent. You hear me talk about my kids, but people don't know that I don't have any biological children. But you Mm. can't tell that by looking at me. You can't tell that when I talk about my family and my kids. And that's important for me to know because I think of my family as just that, regardless of whether we are blood or not, I consider you my family. My kids mm-hmm. are my kids. I've been with them since they were five and seven. They are mine, mm-hmm. right? So for you, what's something people can't tell about you just by looking at you? I'm a tremendously shy person. We talk about, we talked about this all the time. I and am, I still get shocked. <laughs> I'm a tremendously, I am a tremendously shy person and and I mean truthfully as I get older I think some of it has to do with the level of insecurity and imposter syndrome but I am a a tremendously shy person like I don't like attention um yeah Hmm. now why is that important for you to share that because a lot of times people take my aloofness and my uh what appears to be at times lack of communication as some kind of slight like Mm. you you were telling me meanwhile you were apologizing to me for not calling me for my birthday and i'm like all right somebody was getting mad at me because they texted me and i didn't respond it was not intentional i wonder if somebody ever thought about the love that you get on your birthday could actually sometimes be overwhelming. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Like all the attention and you got to think about it. This is coming off a week where I was just voted coach of the year. Birthday, all the stuff going around. Like I'm literally being bombarded (laughs) by 
you know, and, and it, it, it's not that I don't appreciate it. In some ways, I actually, when I get that type of love and reception, I actually feel guilty because I'm not always able to reciprocate it. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Whereas yeah. I am a shy person, I do like engaging and communicating with people, but I don't always have that opportunity yeah. just because of whatever. So, um, you know, that, that was it. That, that, that would be the thing that people would like to know to me. Like, you know, and a lot of times I just look real serious. I'm not mad about nothing. I'm just trying to not scream. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. All right. I appreciate that. In, in 20 something years, I'm still learning stuff about you. Yeah. Uh, that's it, man. You know what? I want to use that to kind of lean into a little bit more about who you are, about who we are as individuals. And with regards to today's episode, it dawned on me as I'm sitting in church, listening to the sermon, that I don't know the answer to this question in all the time that we've been friends. So pastor's preaching and he's talking about expectations He's talking about how people see God and that the relationship is very individual, right? Which then sparked this idea, this question that I'm going to ask you. Thinking about all the things, all the factors, all the elements that contributed to who you are as an individual. If I asked you the question, what's possible? What would be your answer? Anything. Okay. Anything. Anything. Figuring that that would be your answer and thinking about all that has shaped you, I want to lean into all of those things, right? Okay. There's factors that influence what we believe is possible. And I believe that there are people out there who don't believe anything is possible. Yeah. Something has contributed to shaping what they believe and why they believe it. So first, think about the following factors and how they impacted what you believe is possible. Your story in general. Mm -hmm. Think about your story. How did that shape your belief that anything was possible? Um, just the way that it unfolded. Like my story, like how often on this pod, or maybe not even in this pod in conversation, have you told me that Man, you have a doctorate degree, dude. If you would have told me in high school that you were going to have a doctorate degree, we would have laughed at you. You know what I'm saying? That's because you were asleep. You were sleeping <laughs> in class. So it's like, you know, you just watch, you know, for me. I can't speak for anybody else. I just watch how my life has unfolded. And I think I might have said this on the episode that nothing about my life right now has was my plan. This this was not how this was supposed to go. Um, not that it's bad or good. I I, I live an amazing life. Um, but it, it wasn't my plan. This isn't how I drew it up. So that that's what I'm shaped by, where I believe that anything is possible. Like you can literally do and be anything you want to be. Anything. Like I just I just believe that without limitations, without any exceptions. Anything yeah. you want to do, you can do. Now, this is where I think we get caught up. We confuse anything and time. Hmm. That's hmm. where we get caught up. I think I know where you're going with this, but come on. Come on. You say, right? By the time I'm 30, I'm going to have my retirement laid out. I'm going to have a house. I'm going to have a wife. I'm going to have two kids. But what if it don't happen to you 35? <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Which is the case for most people. Which is the case for most people. So I think sometimes we confuse anything you can do and be anything for, we confuse that with time. Like, just because it didn't happen when we wanted to. Like, I heard something the other day. Steve Harvey said he didn't, he wanted to be, he, he knew from he was like six or seven that he wanted to be on television. His first appearance on television was at 38. You feel me? Like, what if, 
What if he would have looked around at 25 and said, God dang, I'm not on TV yet. He would have missed out on being on four different shows at yep. one time. Yep. yep. So anything is possible. Is we just can't put a time limit and 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 our and our own clock on it. All right. Next element in this, which I think shows up in a number of places for a lot of people, is your expectations. Your expectation. How has your expectation either lowered or raised your execution and performance? Um, I don't think I've ever thought about it in those terms. How has so, my expectations because you? Go ahead. Think about this. Because you believe that anything is possible, that then shows up in your expectations, what you expect. Mm -hmm. And in your expectations shows up in your performance, in your ability to execute. And at what level? Because you believe anything is possible, you expect that anything is possible. Therefore, your execution, your actions, your performance looks like this. How are those connected for you? Um, I think the way it's connected is I believe anything is possible, but anything is only possible through a little bit of realism. But the other key is anything's only possible, anything is possible with the work. So it's not so much that I focus on the execution as much as I focus on the work. Um, when I say expectation, realistic, I'm 38 years old. I'm five, six. I'm not going to the NBA. That's not realistic. Not, not at this stage of my life. Now, it could have been possible when I was um, 18. It would have been hard at five, six. But again, you know, there's, there's anything and there's realism in all of that. Um, but I think the expectations and the execution line up when you get to the work. A and the work will look different from everybody. I think we talked about this last week as well. Like, do you, is it more important to get started or is it more important to have yeah. a plan then get started? Yeah. I don't know. I just do something. Go do something. That's just my philosophy. Go, go do something. Um, the execution isn't to me as critical as the start is and as critical as the finishing is, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. What's your answer? For me, because first starting with what I believe, which I too believe that anything is possible if you put in the work. So therefore my expectation is in order to achieve anything, I have to execute at a level that is astronomically high. I have to perform and I got to outperform. And that to me is where that competitive drive comes from. That's where that intentional action comes from. I absolutely believe that what you believe, your, 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 the size of your goals, the, how big they are, will absolutely show up in what you expect of yourself and of other people. I think they're all connected. Directly I think connected. I would replace for me, instead of high execution, I would, I would put consistent execution. Hmm. But that, that, again, that's just my style and, and what worked for me. Okay. Within the execution, here's an important element that I think we also discuss, and we talk about it all the time. Because you believe that anything is possible, how do your failures impact the size of your goals and what you believe? It's no failure. Failure doesn't exist, bro. Just lessons. Hmm. <laughs> There's no failure. Just lessons, man. Failure does exist. If you, if, if, if success is defined, like whether you define it yourself, you say, this means if I accomplish this, this is the finish line. That's success. And you don't achieve that. That's failure. That don't mean it's a bad thing. It's still a failure, though. Success didn't achieve it. What is achieving by when? It goes back to that time. 
like when I think of the achievement, like you you just you just said it, like you didn't achieve it. Okay. Is there a timeline on this achievement? What tell me a thing in life besides going to the NBA where you have a timeline where it's I mean, truly definitively over. Again, this is if I said it, I'm not saying the oh. world says it. I'm saying if I say that by this time frame, I'm going to achieve blank and I don't achieve that, that is technically a failure in my book. Not in my, my book. That yeah, doesn't no, no, your, your book is fine. And I, I, mean, yeah. I hear you. I would just tell you if I'm just sitting back as a friend, stop trying to be God. Because you can't control. When the plant grows, true. The only thing you can be responsible for is did you do the work? So let's say I decided by July 31st, I need to accomplish this. Why I would put an arbitrary time on it? Because that's what us humans do. I get to July 31st. I didn't accomplish this set goal. Now I have to evaluate between when I set the goal and the actual goal. And this is why I say you never fail. Because if you go back and you recant your steps, did you work hard enough? Did you do everything you were supposed to do? Were you dedicated? Were you, did you have a mental block? Ba 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 ba. What was this? Did you respond quick? There's so many different factors in it where now you have the opportunity to learn from the quote unquote failure or the timeline that we have set from it. So I just, I just don't believe that um, it's as cut and dry as succeeding in failing. I think you fail. You only fail when you quit. You then you fail, but then you really you just quit. I guess, I guess for me where in hearing you talk, here's where it got connected for me. I think I still constitute it as a failure because failure for me reveals my fears. Oftentimes when I fail, I'm now afraid of that thing happening again. Like failure is a motivator for me. It's always been. I didn't want to fail, which is why I believed anything was possible, which is why I tried to execute at that high level. So it showed me what my fears were. So I'm interested to know, when's the last time you felt like you failed? Um, Last week. Last week, I felt like, without getting into specifics, um, I felt like I failed at, I'm trying to figure out what I can share without sharing too much. I was working with someone and... I failed at the follow through portion of what I needed to get back to them by a certain time that I set the date on. I still got them that information, but it was at a later date, but I still constitute as a failure because I said that I was going to do it by this time. Okay. You, you constitute that as a failure. I do. Okay. I mean, I see why you would say that. I would argue is figure out why and don't do it again. Um, But I, I think, I guess the question was like more goal related. Like for instance, I'll tell you this. I told myself that if I didn't make it to a certain level in the music industry by the time I was 35, I would have, I was going to hang it up. I wasn't going to do music no more. Um, By the time I was 35, said goal wasn't accomplished. Mm -hmm. But guess what did happen at 35? I got my doctorate degree. Again, yeah, we, we set these arbitrary lines. Meanwhile, all of this is going on in and around us. Yeah. And, and I think sometimes, and I heard it somewhere, and I, might, I may not paraphrase, paraphrase it correctly, but I'm going to say it the way I think it. I think sometimes all the obstacles and mind bleeps, we set ourselves. 
we put those pressures on ourselves. And mm-hmm. it's even doubly worse with social media um, and how the world's smaller right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, things happen the way it's supposed to happen. Thing, things things happen. I, I just believe that, like, when it's time, it's time. When it's, when it's supposed to align, it's, it's supposed to align. But there's, there, it's, there's a fine balance between just happy go luck waiting for stuff to happen and unfold versus you being intentional and can influence when those things happen. We, we set, I think we set an arbitrary line that we're shooting for, but we also in doing the work have to tell ourselves that one, you possibly have never done this before. So you don't know exactly how long it's going to take. And if it doesn't happen by your deadline, Give yourself some grace. Yeah. That, that, I mean, that's the point. I mean, there's, there's nothing happy-go-lucky about it. And that's why I say you never really fail. You just learn. Yeah. Because even if you don't meet quote-unquote deadline, now you have time to self-evaluate and figure out why. Yeah. And that's where the learning comes in. Yeah. All right. We having this conversation about the size of your goals and what you believe is possible. And I'm really curious uh, your answer on this one, because this question is about your friends. How have your friends impacted your belief and the size of the goals that you have for yourself? As one of your friends, I'm really curious to hear this answer. Um... Say what you feel. They haven't had an impact on you at all. They being uh, us. There's a segment where my friends are inspiring me to do better and be better. And that's because there are they are on the same line as me. So you, Sabrina, um, and if I leave somebody out, please don't be offended. It's it's not that, but there are, are also a, a segment of my friendships that I feel like I've kind of advanced in front of, and that's what I was holding my breath on. Um, because where I'm, where I want to be, it's not around me. So like. If, if, if I want to learn how to make it a million dollars, I can't talk to somebody who's contented with making, I give you a high number, 115. I got to rub elbows with somebody that's, oh, it's not 115, 115. I got to rub elbows with somebody that that is close to that million, that's striving to the million because the thought process is going to be different. Like right now, right? Stock market is crashing. So me telling somebody who is not an investor, now's the time to buy stuff is not going to resonate. Mm-hmm. 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 You know, we talked about money being important or not important right now. Right now, we are in a bit of a recession, inflation through the roof. Quitting your job and pursuing your entrepreneur ideas may not be practical advice for somebody, but it might be exactly what they need to do. Hmm. So hmm. I have to talk to people along those, along those vibes. Not, not the person that's excited about this uh, 3% raise that the state's going to give them. So that's what I say. There's a segment of my friends where I love them. We're still going to be friends. But, like, if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to go find a new room. And I'm not saying that I am the smartest person in the room. But what I'm saying is I need to get in a different room right now in my mind to whereas, like, the level to play, like, the level to play is high, higher. I need to get in the room with, in order to play, you got to have 250000 You can't yeah. sit in this room if you ain't got two fifty to spend. The buy-in is higher. The buy-in yeah. is higher. Like, you want to play yeah. in this card game, fam? We starting at 250. Yeah. Yeah. There's some about, there's something about your friends. There's something about the circles you, you operate in on a regular basis 
that I think absolutely contribute to what you believe is possible. They contribute to your expectation. They contribute to your execution. They contribute in so many ways that you don't even realize just by being in those circles, right? You talked about Friday. You called me and you said, man, I just uncovered another revenue stream. You don't realize what that opened up for me. And I'll have to share that with you offline. I can't share that on air, but mm -hmm. you don't realize what that opened up for me in terms of ideas unrelated as to what I now said is possible or what I thought wasn't possible. Yeah. And, and I mean, me being in the circles, I hopefully can do the same for other people. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I can't spend all my time feeding. I got to be fed. So I need to, I need to balance that circle. If I got 10 friends over here that I'm feeding, I need 20 over here to feed me. And that's kind yeah. of the balance of where I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So if you had to sum this conversation up in terms of the question, what determines the size of your dreams? What would you tell our listeners? The size of your work, fam. Hmm. Size of your work. It's just that simple. And then patience would be two. Size of your work and the size of your patience. You can't, you know, um, yeah, size of your work and the size of your patience. Yeah. There's so I'd much information that. that we have to give to y'all that's going to come over the next couple of weeks that will make Man. all of this make sense. <laughs> Man, so crazy. <laughs> So crazy when you talk about what's possible. That's what's up, man. Dope conversation, man. I appreciate you. Footwork. You made any progress with Breaker Nation? I'm curious. Still trying to push these records. And right now we're moving in a direction where we're trying to gain sponsorships and um, sponsorships, both corporate and educational partnerships. So um, that's where we are. Um, and Felicia's a boss. She's a boss. I did something the other day. She told me something, 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 click. <laughs> wow. I can't wow. wait to get her on the pod to tell her the story. But, I, you know, I don't think, I think she had another phone call or something. I think either that or she was just extremely pissed off. But, um, you know, just continue uploading your music to Break a Nation. Um, if you have music, we're starting a new cohort of interns, I believe, in June. So... Yeah. How about you? Uh, I am preparing for two gigs, Boston in October and Cali in October. Yeah. Cali. We, we going, going to Cali. Cali. We're going to Cali. We're going to Cali, my friend. Uh, I got two gigs going. Um, one that I'll be doing out in the L.A. area. Uh, so I'm excited about that opportunity, man. We we connected with a new group that we'll get to speak for. Um, and what's crazy is it's another audience that I didn't expect to be able to serve, but I guess I'm finding that this message resonates with a lot, a lot more audiences. So if you have an event, you're looking for a speaker, definitely hit me up. I might be it. Speaking of speakers, we now have tracks on Spotify and all the streaming services that you can go and listen to some motivational clips. If you go on Spotify or Apple and you check out Purpose by the Purpose Addicts, you can stream the tracks. And we might want to start dropping those tracks at the end of these episodes. So that's what we're going to do, whatever week this is. Same also, way. if you like the theme song produced by yours truly, that's also on um, streaming services. Um, working on a lot of stuff that's called purpose addict on spotify apple so on and so forth so we're beginning to open up how we communicate and all the stuff there and we, we now we just got to figure out how to start plugging it and working it in and let you know it's there bro i've had i've had at least five different people in the last six weeks ask me would shane do some music for me and i said i don't know but i could connect you let send them send them send them now's the time my friend <laughs> <laughs> now's the time that that iron is hitting right now bro yeah now's the time send them um send them and tell them have a timeline for me um send them all right 
But you said you said no timelines. Don't set these arbitrary deadlines. No, 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 no. I said don't set arbitrary timeline on goals. But when you're trying to do the work, the work needs timelines. <laughs> the work needs big timelines because I still owe Sabrina the West Orange County champ. Yeah. The work needs big yeah. time. There was something else I was just going to tell you. Um, oh, one of your reels hit 10K. Ooh. Yeah, one of the reels. Ooh. And it was we get paid. Huh? We get paid. I don't know about that, but it hit 10K. <laughs> hey, folks. He's my music producer, my manager, <laughs> and just like all everybody in the industry, they jip the artists. I can't get paid. Yeah, I gotta go out yeah, on tour yeah, and get yeah. my money. Be looking out for a Coach Vic tour. <laughs> Good stuff. Check this out. Let's end this episode, and I think you're gonna like this quote. I'm getting my car washed, and I'm sitting there looking for inspiration for myself, and I scroll past this one today. It says. Faith in God includes faith in his timing. Mm. That, faith woo! in God includes faith in his timing. That's it right there, bro. Regardless of what you believe, it's important to have faith in what you believe is possible. But make sure you include in that timing because timing is is everything. everything. Allow yourself time to grow. Allow yourself time to develop it. Give yourself grace to unfold. We the Purpose Addicts, man. I'm Coach. That's Doc. As always, we want to encourage you to live life on purpose. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, share the show. Go tell a friend. Go tell a friend. Go tell a friend. And don't forget to tell a police officer (laughs) while you at it. (laughs) We out. And I think a lot of times everybody's not going to understand your vision, your walk, your purpose, your desires, your dreams, your goals. And they don't have to because I'm going to tell you a secret. Everybody ready? It's yours. It don't belong to them. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't they teeth to brush. Ain't they armpits to put the order on. It's yours. This message is for anyone who is not answering the calling on their life. I want you to take note of something. That one thing, that one talent, that one gift you have, that idea that could give birth to a solution that possibly brings harmony to the world will never get the chance to breathe life if you continue to let fear kidnap you from your future. That's right, I said, if you continue to let fear kidnap you from your future. Too many times we settle for good things when we can have God things. And purpose is a God-given gift. Not everybody fulfills their purpose. Not everybody discovers it. Not everybody walks in it. But if you're willing to give up the good things to get to the God things, well, baby, I promise you purpose, that's for you. Failure is a part of success. I heard that somewhere. I didn't make that one. Failure is a part of success. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. You could try 10 times and you may not get it to your ninth, but what if that ninth try or that 10th try is the one that gets you that million? Instead of looking at what we have on the inside and utilizing our tools, we always look in other places and try to pull from there, pull from there, when most of the time it's right here inside of us. There are no problems. There's only solutions. Let's let's just be in a habit of fixing things or finding a way out. My favorite quote that I learned is that fear does not stop death, it stops life. It stops us from living. And I need you. We all need you to live. Will you do it?